Okay, Alexander, we have some news on the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. And uh, this is a very contentious pipeline for the United States. Um, it's, it's also contentious inside of Europe because we had a lot of uh, southern European states. I know uh, being in Greece right now that uh, Greece was extremely ups upset when uh, they had their pipeline dreams kind of dashed away by Germany only a year, a year onwards to have Germany announce that, hey, we're going to be building a Nord Stream 2 now. So, you know, you guys can't uh, make business with Russia, but we sure as hell can't. But now we're running into all kinds of other problems because the Trump administration is getting very aggressive with their uh, oil and natural gas policy and uh, their LNG desires. And they have put a lot of pressure on Germany and the EU. A lot of it has not resulted in anything. But the latest reports show that the Trump administration and the U.S. might be making some headways in trying to thwart the, the Nord Stream 2 project. Yes. Um, can I just say, we've had a, a very interesting discussion about this in Bloomberg, which um, builds on certain reports in the German media, um, which refer to uh, a social democratic politician in Germany who's spoken out against Nord Stream 2. He hasn't exactly said that he's against it. He says that he thinks that it should go ahead, but that the Germans, the Germans, German government did not fully take into account what he called the geopolitical aspect of the pipeline, by which he meant that, um, um, you know, we shouldn't buy oil, uh, sorry, gas from our major um, adversary, which is Russia. And what he was also basically saying is that Russia has not made the sort of concessions on the Ukrainian conflict that Germany was expecting it would make, and that Germany needs to secure the rights of Ukraine to remain as a gas transit state. And he sort of seemed to imply <clears throat> that uh, Nord Stream 2 is in some way dependent on Ukraine remaining a transit state for Russian gas. Now, I have to say, I saw all of that, and I, I read that article with great interest, but I, at the same time as reading all of this, I'm also reading something else, which is that the German foreign minister, who is a much more senior uh, official, obviously, than this um, German social democrat MP is, and who is also a social democrat, and is in fact the most powerful SPD, S social democrat politician, arguably, um, in the German government, um, has actually uh, come out and rather strongly supported Nord Stream 2, directly following these comments. And um, he says that it, he's reiterating that it is a commercial project, not a political one, and he's talking about the importance of Russia as a partner. And he's talking about actually going to Moscow to uh, uh, speak to the Russians about um, Nord Stream 2 and about other issues. Now, I think that there are a number of things in play here. Firstly, um, it's important to say that um, the Ukrainians, the Russians and the European Union are at this moment in time engaged in a negotiation. Um, there is a, a, a negotiation every couple of years whereby the Russians and the Ukrainians agree a transit deal, uh, a deal for the gas that Russia will pipe through Ukraine to Europe. And um, that deal involves an agreement as to the price of that gas, which the Ukrainians will pay, and the transit fees that the U Russians will pay the Ukrainians. So there is actually a negotiation going on. And it may be that some of this uh, uh, pressure from Germany is about trying to facilitate that negotiation. And I have to say, I was struck by the fact that the Bloomberg article I was talking about doesn't really mention the fact that that transit negotiation is underway. But I think the other thing is, as you correctly said, the Trump administration is becoming very aggressive about Nord Stream 2. And it did 
cross my mind when I was reading this um, Bloomberg article uh, and seeing some of the things that are coming out of Germany, whether this isn't really an attempt by some people in Germany to appease and diffuse the quarrel with the United States whilst actually quietly letting Nord Stream 2 go forward. Because Nord Stream 2 has now evolved to that point so much of it has been built that I think cancelling it outright now would be extremely difficult and I think would be even more controversial in Germany than letting it go ahead. How does Nord Stream 2 change the geopolitics of the region? How does it change the geopolitics for Ukraine? Because obviously it's nice to say that we're going to guarantee some transit or we're going to guarantee all the transit maybe mm. of, of gas as well going through Ukraine, we'll, we'll guarantee that. But I think, practically speaking, Nord Stream 2 is a competing pipeline and it is going to suck a lot of the the revenue that would have gone through Ukraine away. I think that's, that's looking at things maybe realistically mm -hmm. um, and commercially. And then there's also the dynamic geopolitically as to what Nord Stream 2 means for the region and not just Germany. Can you get into a, into a little bit of, say, say the Balkans, say Hungary, say Serbia, and these countries, how Nord Stream 2 changed the dynamics as well? Maybe Italy as well, because I know Italy is also a hub where the gas uh, passes through and stops. Right. Can I just say, uh, I mean, there's two parts to your question. Right. I mean, the first is, and, and um, on the first part, the question of Ukraine, you are absolutely right to be cynical. I mean, the Russians and the Germans are going through all these motions of pretending that Ukraine is going to remain a trade partner, a transit state, that Russian gas is going to continue to flow through Ukraine. And they're doing that basically in order to make it seem as if Ukraine's interests are being taken into account. This being important for the Germans, who have made a heavy political investment in Ukraine and who have the very strong pro-Ukrainian lobby in the United States but also in Poland and Britain, to appease. The reality is, once Nord Stream 2 is built, Ukraine isn't needed anymore. And sooner or, uh, sooner or later, probably sooner rather than later, as soon as the existing transit deals are out of the way, the Russians will stop sending gas through Ukraine. That is the whole point of Nord Stream 2. That's why the Russians are building it. That's why the Germans agree to have it built, because both the Germans and the Russians don't trust Ukraine to be a reliable transit state. They saw what happened in 2006 and 2009 when Ukraine siphoned off gas which was intended for European customers at a time when it was in a, uh, um, um, a quarrel with the Russians over gas prices. And they remember what happened in 2014 when Ukraine threatened to do the same thing. That's why Nord Stream 2 is being built. And that is the agenda there. So I think we need to be really realistic about this and it may be a bit cynical people may be going through the motions of protecting ukraine but that's really what the agenda is all about now the second part of it and talking about the geopolitics of this well first of all there's the european geopolitics and i come back to your original point about people in southern europe being very annoyed about how the germans stopped russian pipelines being built to Greece and Bulgaria. to southern Europe and Bulgaria, the so-called uh, South Stream pipeline right. that was supposed to be built alongside Nord Stream, Nord Stream 2. And they're absolutely right. And what they're seeing is that the Germans and the Austrians, who are also involved in Nord Stream 2, in other words, the German-speaking countries, are quietly positioning themselves as the great hub for European gas. It's going to strengthen Germany's position in Europe even more by enabling the Germans not just to control the money flows, but also, in a sense, to control the gas flows. And, of course, people are very annoyed and very angry about this. They're also going to lose 
the direct economic benefits of being transit states themselves, because, of course, Germany is the major gas importer and countries like Hungary and Poland and looking at the other side, Italy and Greece would have wanted to see pipelines bringing gas to Germany through their countries and, and earning transit fees through that. So, of course, all of the Europeans are annoyed with this. We see with Nord Stream 2, the Germans taking a moral position, as they always like to do, but in reality, you know, about Ukraine and all the rest, but in reality, helping themselves. And I'm afraid that's always the way the Germans work. And it's always the way the Russians work, which is they will say, well, if the Germans are prepared to deal with us and uh, we're going to build a pipeline to Germany, which is going to achieve the same objective. Well, there we are. It may not be what we would have but, you know, ideally liked, maybe we'd have liked to have had a South Stream. But, you know, if, if we have to deal with the Germans directly, so, we, so be it. We will. And finally, Alexander is uh, speaking of the U.S. and their efforts to try and uh, derail Nord Stream 2. Is American gas, natural gas, LNG, is it even feasible price wise, uh, practically speaking, for the European Union? To, to export American gas to the EU. Is that even a remote possibility, given, once again, that you have Russia literally sitting right next to Europe with all the infrastructure in place and ready to deliver, you know, just opening up the the lines and the gas is there to go? I mean, yep, right. it seems like the U.S. may be spinning its wheels here trying to, <laughs> trying to export, you know, something that it, it competitively it can't. You can't yeah. even, you know, make make a dent into the market. Well, I, I mean, there's there's a number of points to say here. First of all, I mean, economically, um, there is no conceivable way that the United States, the liquefied natural gas from the United States, which has to be shipped by sea and brought to uh, uh, transit stations in Europe, which at the moment don't even exist. But even if they do exist, there is no way it can ever compete with much cheaper pipeline gas from Russia. I mean, you're absolutely right. Look at the geography, look at the uh, pipeline networks. Um, this is a, a competition the United States can never win if it is played fairly by simple commercial rules. That's why the United States has to introduce these threats of sanctions uh, and, and threaten economic consequences and, uh, uh, you know, by slapping uh, fines on European companies that do deals with Russia, because it knows perfectly well that if the Europeans and the Germans are left to themselves, they will always buy Russian gas in preference to American, because that's the economic logic of this thing. I'm going to say something else, which is that the economic logic is so strong that ultimately I, that's why I think Nord Stream 2 will happen, despite all these rumbles we've been hearing and which the Bloomberg article refers to. I mean, I don't see any way around this. Now, the only conceivable challenge to Germany's dominance in the ru import of Russian gas and Nord Stream 2 is not, in my opinion, going to come from the United States. It's from this parallel network of pipelines that the Russians are quietly building through Turkey. Turk Stream, which has essentially taken the place of uh, 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 South Stream, the, the aborted pipeline that was going to be built to Bulgaria. Turk Stream is proceeding fast. Um, it can always be expanded, and it allows uh, um, potentially the import of Russian gas into southern Europe. But it will be the uh, Germans who lose the dominant position in controlling Russian gas if the Turk Stream pro project um, you know, continues and develops. It will not be Russian gas that stops. In other words, it will be Russian gas coming in through north, through northern Europe and through southern Europe. It doesn't seem to me that there's any real room 
for American gas. And what about the, the networks in Israel, Egypt, Cyprus, the Leviathan Basin, and, uh, and the gas that's been found yeah. there? I mean, they say it's significant. Obviously, it's not anything close yeah. to what Russia has. But, and we're actually many, many years away from actually getting that commercially viable as well and getting it out to the market. But is that yeah. also a threat to, to the Russian and, say, the Russian-Turkey South, uh, South Corridor? No, I don't think so. I mean, first of all, it is significant, and it's significant to these countries. I mean, if this uh, if this gas is ever developed, then I mean, it could be it could be a major contributor to the economies of these countries. On a local but Russia, level, on a local gas. level, oh, exactly. But but Russian gas will always dwarf it. I mean, as the, the Russians are far and away the biggest producers of gas. Uh, uh, um, exporting to to Europe, the only country which potentially could be a challenger to Russian dominance on the uh, 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 European gas market is Iran, which could also build pipelines. Iranian pipelines could, in theory, go through Turkey. Problem is, nobody's building those pipelines, and of course, the United States is waging a sanctions war on Iran which is even stronger than the one it is waging against Russia. So, realistically, an, uh, an alternative to Russian gas simply doesn't exist. And that is why, as I said, despite all these rumbles, the German foreign minister is going to Moscow, and I expect Nord Stream 2 in the end to be built. I think I would just add one thing about this. Of course, the Americans... The U.S. is talking about sanctioning European companies that are involved in the building of Nord Stream 2. But the primary contractors for Nord Stream 2 are the Russians themselves. They are the people who are building it. And they said very clearly, if every single German company pulls out, they will just go ahead and build the pipeline themselves and it will reach Germany. And when it, when it reaches Germany, the, the, Ameri the Germans realistically are not going to refuse the gas it's offering. I mean, it, it, that's just not going to happen. And the same is going to happen when Turkstream is built and uh, um, um, Istanbul becomes a major gas transit hub. Um, Southern Europe is not going to refuse the Russian gas that's coming from there. It would be a uh, economically, uh, it would make no sense for them to do so. So it seems that Russia has all its bases covered there. And, and I the think it does. Yeah, and the last I thing Germany would want is to is is to remove itself from the project, obviously for domestic issues, for economic issues, jobs, etc. I don't think that that would serve Germany's purpose either. But one thing I was thinking before we end this uh, this segment is another consideration is if you start to bring in very expensive LNG. Given what's happening with the yellow vests and, and you know, the, the protests in Paris and now spreading throughout Europe, can you imagine if you were going to tell the Europeans, hey, you know, because of these sanctions with Russia and because the U.S. is, you know, forcing us to bring in this very expensive LNG, you guys are going to have to pay, you know, three, four X more for your for your natural gas. I don't think that would serve the European public uh, very well. <laughs> It wouldn't at all. And can I just make a point? Of course, what we would also do is it would make German, uh, the ger German industry less competitive because it would be paying more for its energy than it would otherwise. Um, um, something which some people in the United States might want, but the Germans realistically don't want. And this at a time when German industry is contracting. They're under enormous economic pressure at the moment. German, the German economy may actually be in recession. So it's not just France, it's Germany also. I, I, I think the politics of this, as I said, are very, very difficult. Uh, uh, pulling out of Nord Stream 2 is not going to be popular in Germany. And you're absolutely right to point to the yellow vests in France, and let's not forget, there's also the IFD rising in Germany also. Um, as I said, I think we're going to see here more rumbles. Um, I think the Germans want to see some sort of a deal done involving Ukraine, even if it's only a temporary one, just to help them a bit with the political problems. But ultimately, and precisely for the reasons you said, they don't want to risk a political or economic problems that come 
from not from denying themselves cheap Russian gas. Yeah, geopolitically and just geography wise, it, it just yeah. makes such simple sense. Absolutely, absolutely. All you need to do is look at a map, oh, and it's just ob- obvious. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, Alexander Redkurs, editor in chief of the Durant. Thank you very much, guys. If you like this video, click on the subscribe button down below and click on the notifications bell to get notifications every time we push out a new video. And visit the Durant shop, pick up a T-shirt, help support the Durant. In the description box down below, you will find links to our PayPal and Patreon page. Please donate to the Durant. It really helps out a lot. And of course, you can go to the Durant.com and see articles that Alexander links up for everybody that's watching this podcast and this YouTube video to reference. Alexander McCurris, Editor-in-Chief of the Durant. Thank you very much. Until next time, everybody, take care.